Hi guys, it is Deirdre Elizabeth and I thought today I would do something exciting and fun and give you guys a wonderful little gift that you can use in your lives. So happy birthday, Merry Christmas, here it is. So I am going to teach you a little trick. It's called a cognitive interview and there are three steps to it and we use it in forensic psychology to help us to determine if someone is being honest or if they're being dece deceitful and there's deception and they're telling a lie. So, so first of all, I'm gonna be clear. We use neurolinguistics, which is the way people talk, the way they tell their story, the language, the words they use, and body language in, com in combination, okay? So I've made videos previously about body language, so if you're interested in this, look that up. Um, there's there's lots of information on it, and I made a, really, a couple really good videos about body language, so they're in there, so scroll through and take a look, and you'll find them. Today I'm just going to talk about the actual lie itself, and three tools that you can have in your little toolbox to determine if someone is being deceitful or if they are being most likely honest with you. Now, these are never 100%. Everybody is different. You have to take that into consideration, but it's a pretty damn good indicator. And it all comes down to consistency. So the way to, de to determine consistency is to have a good baseline, first of all. So if it's somebody new, someone you don't know, the best thing you can do is talk to them for a little while about different things, different subjects. Get a read on them. Watch their body language when they tell stories. Watch how they describe things, their descriptors, how they use their body when they're describing things. You want to watch their body language, their eye contact, the way they use their face, move their head, and all of that I cover in my body language video about determining if someone's lying and if they're being honest with you. But um, you want to also focus very heavily on the way they talk, the way they tell stories, the order in which they tell them, and and the words they use, the wording that they use, the level of detail they go into. All of these things are all things that are going to help you. Sorry, I can see my face has dirt on it. It's really attractive. Anyways, back to the subject. So, let's not drag this out. Let's get to the point. So... Forensic interviewing skills, 101, cognitive interview. So if you're determining a baseline and you're trying to determine if someone's being honest with you or deceitful, basically you don't need to determine a baseline because you know it because 99% of the time you only care if someone's lying because you know them and you know them well and you know what their baseline is, you know how they talk, you know how they explain stories, and you know what to look for because you know when they're lying to you and when they're full of crap and when they're being honest. So basically you get your, you have your gut feeling already, but these are just tools to help you on your way. So it's not gonna be hard for you to determine that baseline because most of the time it's somebody you know or you wouldn't care if they're lying or not. So number one, number one skill is you're gonna look for detail in their story, in their lie, whatever the story they're telling you. And you're looking for details because when people tell a story that's real, if it's exciting to them, if it's important, if it's anything they really want to convey and they want you to understand, they're going to give you details around it. They're going to lead up to it. They're going to lead up to the main event of their story, okay? And that is usually a characteristic of someone being honest and telling the truth. That's how human beings communicate an event that's important to them, um, especially if they know it's important to you. So they are going to give lots of great detail. If their story is vague, if it's lacking detail, it's very much lacking detail. It's very vague to the point and they're just telling you the lie or telling you the, like, the, the main event chances are there's some deception there. And a lie and deception doesn't always mean they're lying about what you think they're lying about. They're lying. They might be, they're being deceitful. There's deception, but it might not be what you think. They might be being deceitful about something completely different, or they might not want you to know something. They might be leaving something out that has nothing to do with what you're worried about. Okay, so keep that in mind. Just because you determine someone's not being honest doesn't mean they're not being honest about what you're thinking. So always keep that in mind. And again, nothing's 100%. Okay, number two. And guys, if you're enjoying this video and you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I produce this content all the time. I love it. It's my stuff. It's my game. And it's what I do. And I 
would appreciate the subscription. I'm trying to grow my channel so I can share this information with people and make it useful in their lives and help them navigate through life a little bit easier with some of the tools that I've learned throughout the years. And um, give me a thumbs up. That helps me with the algorithm. It helps me spread the information and it helps spread me throughout the algorithm further so that more people again get to see and get to hear the messages that i'm trying to share so number one you've got that you want detail number two is my favorite one this always works ask them to tell their story backwards if you think they're lying they are not giving detail you know their baseline something's not right ask them to tell you in reverse what happened because what you want to do is create a cognitive overload in the whole interview process or, or questioning period while they're telling you a story you want to create a cognitive overload so when they become overloaded cognitively their brain can't concentrate on the lie and answering sequentially and answering in a consistent fashion and it's all about consistency as soon as they start showing inconsistencies you know there's deception so you want to increase the overload and asking them to tell their story backwards that is cognitive overload like there's no tomorrow like they are not gonna be able to do it that is when 99 percent of the time you get your confession the head the chin goes down the eyes close and as soon as you see that you know someone's about to tell you they're they're being dishonest or tell you what really happened okay so you'll see it with everybody from killers to sexual offenders to lying girlfriends or boyfriends to your little five-year-old telling you they didn't steal the cookie when they're about to admit it the chin goes down and the eyes close and they say i didn't do it or i did it they'll tell you okay so as soon as you see that body language you know the lie you know the admissions coming and that you you got them it's in the bag like you got them you own them it's done so you ask them to tell their story backward cognitive overload through the roof they won't be able to tell you story the, their story backward and they certainly won't be able to do it with the details in order if they gave you details in the first part of this questionnaire so in the first part of this questioning if they gave were able to provide some sort of detail they won't get the details right when they tell the story backwards so that's number two. Number three is also really, really good. You want to ask them questions, but you don't want to ask them the questions that they would have prepared for. They're going to be prepared for questions. They're going to have expected questions. You need to ask questions that are unexpected, things they didn't prepare for. Again, increasing the cognitive overload. They are going to scramble to find answers that fit in with the story and the details that they already gave you, okay? So for instance, if they your your buddy tells you, your your buddy tells you, you know, he went to a certain place or your boyfriend tells you he went to a certain place and you know he was somewhere else because somebody saw him you can say did you see anyone you knew at that place right did you oh who were you with oh your friend oh what was he wearing what did the bouncers look like um you know little details like that what was your favorite song what did they play what did the band play um what did you drink like stuff like that and it's not that they're hard questions to come up with answers to they're easy bullshit questions to come up with answers to it's that they won't be able to because they're trying to make sure their answers fall in line with the details and the story they gave already and they're trying to remember their answers at the same time so that increases the cognitive weight and the cognitive load so you are pushing them into overload you're increasing the chance that they're not going to be able to hold up and they're going to crack right in front of you and have a meltdown and tell you that they lied and they have been deceitful so I love making videos like this because they're useful professionally they're useful personally they're useful with your little two-year-old when they said they didn't hide their dirty diaper under the couch like <laughs> they're they're useful not like that's a, a serious offense or anything but you know what I mean these are videos that are useful to help you navigate through life in many different situations in many different ways and you don't have to use all three tools you can use what's appropriate, what's fair, what fits in, what, what's appropriate at the time with who you're talking to and what you're trying to determine. You can mix it up, you can switch the order around, it doesn't matter. Those are the three components of a cognitive interview and a cognitive interview is just one tactic we use in forensic interviewing. And there you have it, my friends. So I hope you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me a comment if you try this and when you see the chin fall,
leave me a comment because I love it. It's my favorite thing. When I see the chin drop, I know I won. I won. I love it. It's my favorite moment. Anyway, I will see you guys soon. I hope everyone has a fabulous day. Give me a thumbs up and I will see you soon. Use the power for good, everybody. Use it for good.